Hello, my name is Elena and I am part of the programming homework help. Today I'm going to show you how to program my vending machine with Python. A common exercise for programming is to think about making a code for a simple device or machine we already know. For this particular case, we will use a vending machine. Let's imagine that we have a company and that we created a new vending machine that must be programmed in Python. And we want to test it in a school. This vending machine application must be able to keep records of the items in the stock and some of the other details to include our item ID, uh, the price, the quantity of the items, uh, the item name, and so on and it will be able to give a receipt after any action. Also, it must be uh, a different menu for employees and for students. The program will be composed by three different parts. For application PI, the program will be executed when running this code. Uh, this includes uh, the functions for all of the other parts. For Contents PI, this part implements the classes for ID, price, name, and quantity. And User Functions, this part declares all of the core functions, uh, the one for buy an item, for search an item, and for add an item. This is the code we need for our vending machine. As I said before, we will we'll need these three parts for our vending machine application. In this one, we will find functions for the different users and the main function, in which we choose one of the available options on the menu. For this part, we will start importing the user functions file, which is another of the main elements of the program and I will explain it in a moment. Then we have the login function in which we will ask the user to provide an ID so we can show in a specific menu. Here we can see two different menus for the users, one, is one for the staff and another one for the students. Here we can see that we have options to buy, to display items and quit. And only for the employees, the option to add an item. But menus ask the user to write their choice. If this is not the correct, we will have a warning. For the main function, we will need again of the user functions, which are located in the user functions file and the given user ID. Depending on the user ID, we will give either a staff menu or a student menu. In the next part, the program proceeds to ask the user what function is next. In the case of buying an item by writing E1 or S1, we will see that the user ID is involved in this function. Later, we will explain why. The next option is exclusive for the employees, which is adding items to the vending machine. The next option is available for both users and this displays the information of the products of the vending machine. When we give an invalid option, we will get this message on the screen. This content file is very short but also very important because it gives us information of the content of the vending machine, like the items information. In this case, their ID, their price, name, and quantity. This self keyword means the attributes with the given arguments, so we use to define this information. With the description function, we will show on the screen the information of the items. For this user functions file, we will need the information in the contents file. All the vending machine information will be stored in global items. We started with an empty list of items. 
Then we put some initial items on the vending machine. In this case, we are gonna add some water and chips with the respective ID, quantity, and price. This append function adds each item to the item list. And as we said before, the add item function is exclusive for the employees. By choosing this option, this function will ask the user for the information of the item to add, like in the previous example. When we have this information, we search the item ID in our item list. If this item does not exist on the list, it will be added as a new item. If it already exists, it will update it. This buy item option will ask the user for the item ID to get its description. Then we can see that we implemented a 20% discount when the user is a student. This now will be used to calculate the total price. The calculate function asks for the money depending on the result on the previous function. This vending machine can detect if the money quantity was exact if you will receive any change or if you need to introduce more money. The search function was previously used, in this case given an item ID. This function will read the global items until finding the item and giving its information with the given ID. We also wanted to give a receipt to the users, so this function allows us to display this information of the products. When we finish the procedure, the function quit will display this and the program will end. We hope the video was useful for you. For any help with programming homework, you can visit our webpage programminghomeworkhelp.com or send an email to info at programminghomeworkhelp.com. Thanks for watching.